So there is a lot to cover with the extra 5 M4 wireless, so let's go ahead and start with the build quality. There is absolutely no shell flex anywhere to be found, but there is some creaking when I press the side sometimes, and there is also rattle. The creaking is minimal and neither of these happen in really use, so I would say the quality is good, but the build is not quite as tanky as it is with the extra 5 M4 Tokyo Edition, for example. They did decide to stick with the holes, but these are rounded and circular, so these are not quite as bad as some other honeycomb designed holes. They don't really bother me that much, but I would want the mouse from extra 5 without holes. The coding you can only pretty much feel on the button triggers, and it's not the best feeling coding. It's quite plasticky, but it doesn't really matter as it's pretty much only available on the buttons. The main most buttons have now the Gale GM 8.0s and these are very light and easy to actuate and also tactile. The M4 wireless has a very good implementation of the Gale GM 8.0s. Usually I do feel that these switches can be a little bit heavy to actuate so the clicks might feel a little bit unresponsive, but not at all in this case. There is absolutely no side play even when I really try to force it, but there is quite a bit of pre-travel and some post travel. The pre travel does make the click feel a little bit cheap for me, but functionally it does not change anything. The thing with the M4 is that the button triggers are very long, so if you click the button from the front edge, it basically bends a little bit, so there is more pre travel from the front than there is from the middle. So the further back you click, the less there is pre travel. This issue is not specific to M4 at all, this basically always happens when the button triggers are fairly long. The side buttons also have some pre travel and some post travel, but the click feeling is still tactile. The back button is a bit more mushy than the front one, but in-game I could not tell the difference. Overall I would say that these are decent in-game and in general use. The scroll wheel then again is still the same as always with the M4, so it has defined steps, but these are not tactile at all, and the scrolling experience is very smooth and also quite silent. I'm not a fan of this scroll wheel myself, I prefer something that's a little bit more heavy and a little bit more tactile. Also, the scroll wheel button is pretty easy to actuate. The mouse feet are PTFE, but these are actually somewhat rough and they are more rough than the ones on my Tokyo Edition, for example. In my opinion, the experience is too rough with something like the Artisan Iron. The same kind of applies with the sky pad as well, the experience is surprisingly rough with a glass mouse pad as well. Even with textured control pads like the Extend Control, the feeling is not quite smooth as with some other mouse feet. And with some smoother control pads like with the Zero Gravity, the feeling is still surprisingly rough. But with very smooth pads like for example the PureTac Turbulence SE, or some slower pads like the Odin Eclipse or the Extrafy GPC-1, the feeling is still good. But overall I would like to see Extrafy improve the feed, because even on the Extrafy M4 Tokyo Edition, the experience is quite rough with the high end for example for me. The weight on the M4 wireless is actually a very interesting thing, as it has this customizable weight balance system, and I did try many settings and the one that I like the most is that move it as forward as possible. I feel I have the most control and the mouse is the easiest to lift when the weight is set as front as possible. Even with this setting I would still say that it's fairly well balanced the middle of the mouse. To be honest the difference is not obvious by any means when you change it so you won't feel any drastic kind of difference but there is some difference at least. So for me it's cool that they did this but I'm not quite sure how useful this will be. And just talking about the weight it's 71 grams on my scale which is exactly what they specify. It feels very good and lightweight for a mouse in this size category. So let's get to the things that I think you guys have been waiting for, so what kind of wireless delay there is and what's the click latency? Well the click latency is very good, but it's not on the super light level for my testing. But at the same time it's way better than the prime wireless for example. The debound setting is configurable and it does affect click latency, and I myself recommend to use the 2 millisecond option that's available. With the light click tensioning of the M4 and the low click latency, these do feel very responsive. So these are really good even for those click timing heavy games. So the sensor in the mouse is the 3370 and we've seen many good implementation even for wireless with that sensor in the past two months. And the same applies for the M4. Not quite as good as the super light but you won't feel any difference whatsoever in game. The polling rate is also stable and the lift off distance is configurable from the mouse and with the lower setting it's under 1 dvd. Overall I'm really happy with this wireless implementation. The battery life isn't amazing but it's surprisingly good concept the RGB. With this dynamic RGB mode, the battery lasts at least 5 days, which is very respectable with this kind of RGB. But if better battery life is something that you want, you of course want to disable the RGB, and we will get closer to super light for example, but not quite up to par with it. It also has USB-C, so charging is fairly fast as well. I always leave the mouse charging overnight, but if you sleep in the same room as you game, you might be irritated by the slideshow. This is an overkill and it might bother you with your sleep. So let's move on to something that most of 
of you guys are interested in and that's going to be the shape. The M4 Wireless has now the same swappable shell style that the M42 had. There is the standard back shell that's very familiar to you guys who've used an M4 before and then there is another shell with a more aggressive hump. It's also possible for you to design your own shells and 3D print them if you have the skills and the gear. The design of the changeable parts has changed from the M42, it had magnets and now we have screws and the shell overall kind of clips in more than it did before. So the way you change the top shell is that you get rid of these three screws and then just take the shell out, put a new one back in and screw it together. I personally have been testing both shells quite a lot and I haven't even used the screws. In normal use there is no side play whatsoever even without the screws and to be honest I can't really even force any kind of motion. So lazy me is just not going to be using the screws as I test both of these but I recommend screwing it together once you've decided which kind of shell you want to use. There are two main takeaways that make the M4 quite unique and those are the thumb curve on the left side of the mouse and the fact that it's actually quite flat from the top which is unusual for an Ergo mouse. The M4 is also fairly low profile from the front but there is still plenty of room on the sides as it does slope down quite fast from the middle of the mouse where the hump is. Thumb curve on the back left is quite aggressive and it's one of the things that people have a hard time getting used to. As the hump of the mouse isn't overall very aggressive, the most pressured contact or force to the mouse is applied with the uh, thumb area of your palm. Whereas the middle of your palm is not going to be touching the mouse at all, or it's very softly touching it. This mainly depends on what kind of claw you are using and how extended your fingers are to the front. For me personally, the middle of my palm isn't really touching the mouse, but the most contact is done with the sides of my palm right here. With this OG back shell, the shape is very good for any kind of claw and also somewhat good for palm grip, but I personally do not enjoy it at all for palm. I'd say your hand size should be about 18 times 10 centimeters or smaller to palm. I still would mainly recommend this shape for claw, as the thumb curve and the gradual curvature on the right side of the mouse make it very good for that. I love the shape for aggressive claw, relaxed claw, and it's a mouse I can easily use my endgame grip style with. Then again with the new back shell, the mouse is basically claw grip only. The hump is way more pronounced and it's more towards the back of the mouse. This shell is more there to hit the middle and bottom of your palm like a standard kind of claw mouse. So this will most likely feel more familiar to you guys that haven't used an M4 before. The shell kind of pushes your thumb back a little bit so the thumb curve is not going to feel as aggressive with this shell as it does with the original one. And that is because there is more contact with this hump to the middle of your palm. This might make the shape a little bit more safe, but for you guys who have grown to love the M4 like I have, it will kind of lose the unique feeling of the mouse. I mean, it's still unique because of the front curvature and the flat top, but you will lose that palm feel. Now, those are the two options that you have, and I will have to say that they do make sense as they did with the M42. The feeling is significantly different with each shell, so it's not just a marketing move. You should, of course, end up using just one shell, but it's nice to have those options to begin with. But finally, how did I actually perform in-game with the M4, and what do I think it's very good for? Personally, at the moment, I prefer the original shell because I just have a lot of control and a lot of mobility with it. What gives me the most control and stability with the mouse is the thumb curve and the front right corner. This lets me stabilize the M4 very well, but I still have a lot of mobility and it's of course easy to lift the mouse this way. In terms of aiming, I've got no issues whatsoever with the M4, so everything feels natural and easy, tracking, micro adjustments, flicks, pretty much everything. But what I'm most nasty with the M4 is definitely the flick shots and precision. I'm really confident and precise when I'm tapping heads, and my first shot accuracy is great. In terms of competition, there are quite many options in the wireless ergo market at the moment. For example, the X-Lite wireless, the Ninja Georgian One X, the Model D and the Model D minus wireless. The D, the D minus and the X-Lite are all pretty much easy one and easy to clones, so I would say they are more safe but also less unique. The Origin One X is then again overall quite a bit smaller, but the M4 does feel thinner than all the rest of the options. It costs 89 bucks or 99 euros, so the value for money is good, while it's not amazing like the Pulsar X-Lite wireless for example. But hey, let's not forget that the M4 does come with the cool ass RGB which does improve your aim with like 15% or something. The M4 wireless comes highly recommended from me although it does have its issues for example, the feet are not the best and I would definitely want these to be improved and the build quality is not as good as it was on the original M4. Just remember the fact that you will need to use quite a bit of time to get used to the mouse completely. That's pretty much it, because this is a wireless mouse review, I recommend you watch my video about input lag right here. It has detailed explanations about input lag and click latency and which games those matter the most. Then you can check out this video right here if you want to know which mousepad could be the best one for you. If you enjoyed the video, hit that like button. If you enjoy my content, hit that subscribe button and see you in the next one.